Okay folks, um, uh, just off the back of the um, early tutorial of um, building a composition using layers, um, we're just going to have a wee look at opening up a file. Um, and not, I should maybe stress actually, it, it, we're going to be looking at opening up an image or a photograph essentially, as opposed to a Photoshop file, this .psd file. I'm just going to go to my desktop and see what I've got here. So if I go to desktop, Um, let's see, I should have something we could use it as a JPEG. I'll use this one here. So when I open that up, now that file could be a photograph you've saved on your computer, it could be a file photograph or image that you've downloaded or saved for the internet. Now, when this opens up, you'll notice that it's just that one image and it's default and named as a background layer. Now rule of thumb, if I double click on this and give it a name again, okay so I'm just going to call this painting. Okay, it now unlocks that layer and it leaves it editable for me. Now something we'll look at in the future, but I may as well cover it just now, is that whenever we plan on working with an image we should always make a copy of the layer just in case we do something that we're not happy with and it saves us time having to bring the original image back in again or in the worst case scenario saving over the original image and losing uh, that original image because of any kind of mistakes that we might have made. Okay. So if I right click on that layer I have the option to duplicate a layer which will automatically make it a copy. You could name it whatever you want but when I OK that you'll see and then I have two layers. Now similar to the previous tutorials with understanding layer, if I hide this layer looks as if nothing has changed because obviously it's the exact same thing underneath. Anyway, you can see at the top here on my tab that I now have this image open. I also currently have the Photoshop file that we were working on earlier open and I can easily jump between these two tabs. In fact I can have multiple images open along the top. If I was looking to try and work out this image size I click on image and then go to image size. It's a whole bunch of information here. Okay, so now this is giving me um, the size in, in pixels. It's also giving me a measurement of the file size itself at the moment before saving it. We'll look at file sizes a wee bit down the line. Um, but at the moment, I can see that my width and my height is measured as a perfect square, 1200 by 1200 pixels. And again, we could change this and these values to percentages as well. The document size here is measured in centimetres, but it can also be changed to whatever value you wish. And because this, this image had been created for purposes of um, being uploaded onto an internet or website, it was set up and created a resolution of 72 ppi or pixels per inch. Okay, so there's my image size information which is extremely useful um, if I'm looking to try and find out the exact pixel rating that's used within an image and get an understanding of the output or document size if I'm planning on maybe printing it whether you're working in PDO or metric it might, have, it might have be a better idea or perhaps even if you're planning on um, printing onto photographs or something like this um, planning and creating buying frames or for, for some of your work, you might want to think about what's going to be the size for this um, output document. Now the great thing about Photoshop is that these can all, this can always be changed and altered in some kind of way or shape or form. So I'm going to hit OK and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to file and create a new document again. Keep struggling a wee bit. Okay, so here we go, new document. Now I'm just going to call this, this original image, um, a file that I have opened is called Sandwood B. I'm just going to call this Sandwood um, U, okay, just to give us an idea. And the preset, what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to make a small A5 version of this image. Okay, but it's something I'm planning on printing, so I'm going to make it three, the resolution 300. Um, and 
that in fact I mean I should also change the colour mode to CMYK for printing purposes. OK, so I'm going to hit OK. And there is my new document, all's not lost. My other one is just here. I want to get this image onto this document here. So how I go about doing that is well, two ways. What I can do is I can lift this window off and using my move tool drag the image. So I'm holding down the left mouse and dragging it. I can pop it on and then it's dropped on. If I undo that I can do Control Z or Command Z to undo or I can go to Edit Undo Drag Layer and that undoes the last process I've just made. If I move this back up again you'll notice that blue bar appears. It's now popped back up in the top. Okay. Another way of doing it is actually just holding down the move on the layer. And you'll notice it's the top layer I'm grabbing. Hover over my new document, still with my mouse held down, let it go, and it pops it on top. Sometimes it can be a wee bit confusing when you've got all the panels. Prefer it, um, personally, I, I prefer to kind of move my panel down and just drag it across so I can see both documents at the one time. Okay. Now, I've actually have no more use for this Sandwich Bay JPEG, the original image I opened that I duplicated the layer on. So I'm going to close that so it doesn't confuse anything for us. No, I don't want to save any changes. Not interested. So, this is my new A5 document. You'll remember at 300 um, pixels per inch. And at the moment I have this painting copy layer floating on top of a white background. Okay, now just for practice, I'm simply going to resize it to fit A5. Now you can clearly see when you look at the dimensions here, okay, this is a portrait image, a portrait canvas with a square image in it. So when I resize this, I'm going to lose, I'm going to cut off part of the image, but it's only just to um, kind of get, I guess, your head around it. So I'm going to go to Edit, Transform Scale, which is going to allow me to resize the document, or resize this layer rather. Um, and you'll notice, just out of curiosity, the images can appear off the screen here, but this is simply just like a, a window the images can pass through. So the images can be scaled larger than the actual canvas area. And I guess I'm going to show you an example of that just now. If I hold down the shift key and drag down the corner here, you can notice that I now have populated the whole height of the image. But I have some extra space on either side that I can tweak move the image and I'm just going to do it like this for just now and commit to the transform by ticking it and that's now made a new representation of this image which is populated within an image size of A5 if I was to change that um, no in fact the centimeters there I'll, I'll display that can show the height there is um, half year E4 essentially. Okay, so that's opening up a, a, an image, being able to check the image size of it, and then also creating a new document and dragging it over, and that would apply to anything that you were planning on using. And this is where your composition again came in, because I could drag series of images onto this document here. Now, if I wanted to save this document, if I go to File, Save As. I've got options. Now, de by default, Photoshop will try and save your file format here as a Photoshop PSD file. The advantage of that, and similar to this layers and composition in vector PSD, is that that keeps all those layers and all the information. So if you're planning on coming back and working in a document at a later date, it'll have all that. But say you're completely happy with the image, and all you want to do is then just save that out as a JPEG. Um, this would be your last protocol or any other file format for that reason but this will condense the image down and will simply just save it on the computer as a, as a bog standard graphic as an image that could be opened in pretty much any other software package the PSD file is um, specific only to Photoshop and will only be able to be opened in Photoshop and have all the layers and information there so whilst you're working on work you want to be into the habit of saving these Photoshop files and Personally, you want to start looking at maybe using a variety of different versions. For example, Sandwood New, I could go away and do some edits and maybe come back and save that as Sandwood New 2 
three, four, five, etc. Until I'm completely happy with it, when I'm then looking to create a flattened um, graphic. Okay. So I think that covers our kind of introduction stages and we'll be moving on to some other further tutorials um, as we go along.